Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. The most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. George Orwell. Premier Notley said in her State of the Province address on October 19th, 2016 that on few files was our province more poorly served than by elected officials from this province who claimed with a straight face that there was no need to act decisively or effectively on climate change. It seems the Premier is unaware of the 2002 Albertans and climate change taking action or the 2008 Alberta government report moving forward. That records many of the firsts and leadership shown by the previous Progressive Conservative Administration of Alberta on climate change and pollution reduction. Though the Premier went on to claim this failure to attend to the fundamental strategic interests of Alberta is a key reason why we remain landlocked today, despite 10 years of promises that the issue was going to be addressed effectively. In fact, as reported by Vivian Krauss and others like Counterpunch, Alberta has been the target of a nasty smear campaign by numerous foreign-funded activist groups which appear to be acting as proxies for competing oil, gas, resource exporting nations or on behalf of wind and solar commercial interests, as reportedly has occurred with the Sierra Club in the Sierra Club in the United States. In Canada, in 2005, the Sierra Club gave Alberta an F while giving Ontario a B plus in their Rio review. Ontario aggressively began wind and solar development on the advice of environmental groups who claimed that phasing out coal and going to wind and solar would be cheaper and cleaner, as reported by Terence Corcoran in the Financial Post recently, on the same day that Premier Notley's speech was given, with the Premier touting wind and solar and declaring that coal will be phased out in Alberta. The Kingston Solar Project provides little power for a lot of costs, some 42 cents per kilowatt hour. Alberta's coal-fired power costs about 2 cents per kilowatt hour at the gate. Wind and solar can never compete with the low cost and reliability of coal. So demarketing of coal through demonizing it is a key strategy in implementing wind and solar, which effectively means the power system relies on typically more expensive, volatile market priced natural gas. The Moving Forward report of the previous Alberta government also documents the many energy efficiency programs that were in place at the time, disputing the Premier's claim that no such programs had previously been in place in Alberta. These included a furnace rebate program, soak up the savings to replace old washer dryers with more energy efficient models, exit to savings to replace multi-residence exit lights with LEDs, on-farm efficiency, energy efficiency audit, the Me First $30 million municipal efficiency interest-free loan program, hail a hybrid for taxi companies, reduce idling campaign, car heaven to get old polluting cars off the road, and the adoption of leadership in energy and environmental design, or LEED, standard for all government buildings, the adoption of Go Green national certification of the BOMA organization for all government buildings, failure to address the trade war conducted against Alberta and Canada by foreign-funded environmental activists cloaked in green while ideologically pursuing the adoption of large-scale wind and solar in Alberta, along with rapid coal phase-out, in our opinion will lead to dire consequences. Depending on the approvals and development of new natural gas capacity, Alberta could soon see a lack of power capacity as old coal plants close early, when the carbon tax makes them unprofitable. The outcome could be like that of the UK, rolling blackouts, ineffective stopgap measures, and widespread heat or eat poverty. The claim for climate change action is often based on the alleged sole authority of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. But the non-governmental International Panel on Climate Change are equally authoritative on science, far less politicized, and exhibit a thoughtful review of the evidence. Findings of theirs include Earth's surface temperatures are largely driven by variations in solar activity. 
Further, the activists who claim they will grant social license for pipelines and LNG processing facilities if we just comply with going green, these groups have historically demonstrated that they just want more, no matter how much progress is achieved. The state of the province and the nation is being devastated by these fifth columns. When will someone in authority address this issue? <music>